Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our uh, extended uh, work session at uh, August 2nd, 2021 at 5.30. Good evening, citizens, council. You will be also the acting uh, clerk for this portion of the meeting, so yes, I will. we appreciate that. And if you call please. Absolutely. Uh, Councilman Cobb? Here. Uh, Councilman Roadwall? Here. Vice Mayor Cook? Here. Mayor Lowry? Here. Councilman Grimm? I'm here. Council? Woman Eggleston. Here. Council Woman Nowakowski. Here. <laughs> we have seven members present. Thank you very much, sir. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. You will please bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, please bless this group tonight as we attempt to do the business for the citizens of this grand city. Please protect all of our EMTs our firefighters, our deputies, and those of our troops that are across the seas. Please also put our blessings upon those of us that are sick with this COVID-19 and see if we can do something in order to allevi alleviate this new strain. With that, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. on regular minutes. We'll handle that in regular session. Communications none. City manual report will be handled in regular session. Comments from the members of the public. None. All right. And then committee reports none. Resolutions and ordinances will be handled in regular session. Down to other business. Legislation discussion. Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Council, members of the public. Uh, just a quick little review of the legislation so we can uh, have a little bit more time left for the charter review uh, work session. Uh, so tonight we have resolution 21-13R that was introduced <coughs> on July 19th. Uh, that is a resolution that amends our capital improvement plan. Uh, I think this one has to deal with the, uh, the software for the mayor's court and then also the uh, wastewater repair for the United States. We also have uh, resolution 21-14R, that is introduction, public, and hearing and action tonight. And this is the first of many uh, resolutions that we do to improve our streets by lighting. So we all know August is assessment month. We're here, that's why we see the influx of ordinances on our agenda tonight. Uh, so we start off with the resolution, council approves that, then it goes to the subsequent uh, ordinance. So the ordinance is up tonight is ordinance 21 e uh, that actually was on last week's agenda, but we did not have enough members for the emergency. So I did put that back on as an emergency measure. And that is um, expenditure of over $20,000 to pay for our yearly audits. Uh, what's different this time around here is that we actually have a, 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 a contract with them for the next five years. So instead of doing this every year, we just kind of do it in one swipe and take care of our audits until 2025. 2023, I'm sorry. Uh, we also have Ordinance 21-24 tonight. Uh, that is an ordinance appointing a magistrate uh, for the mayor's court. And the sub subsequent one, 21-25, is an ordinance appointing a clerk for the mayor's court. Uh, we have Ordinance 21-26. Uh, that is an ordinance in place in certain sections of Chapter 248 of the codified ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding city policy. And that is our piece of credit card policy. Five with House Bill 132. Um, the remaining is just introduced tonight, and they all are assessment ordinance. We will vote on those at the August 16th meeting. Uh, first one is 21 28. That is a piggyback off of the resolution to declare the set necessity of writing them. Uh, this one determines that council shall proceed with that rewriting. Then we have uh, ordinance 21 29, which levies assessments to light those streets. Um, and then 21-30 is our uh, ordinance for delinquent utility accounts. So if someone doesn't pay their water bill, we put them on a lien. Um, and the remaining two, 31 and 32, uh, those have to deal with the uh, weeds that we had cut, grass, grass cutting debates we had done over the past year. And subsequently, the nuisance one uh, would be if we went and cleaned up someone's house with trash, we didn't cut grass. So again, these are all yearly ordinances that we do. It does seem like a lot. 
but you know, uh, they're, they're much needed. Any questions on any legislation? I'd be happy to entertain. Council, any questions, comments, feedback, all the above? I just have one. It's not, it's, I don't know, the uh, mayor's board. Are we yeah. going to be, um, I guess it's not tied to those exactly, but uh, at what point will we need to get into discussion about what you're going to need for this city building as far as in and using the chief? Um, I'm already working on that. I think that's part of the CFE remending because we have a little buffer in there for you to go ahead and get like a wand. Right. So after this one, we have about maybe two or three more ordinances we need to do on the mayor's court. We're going to bring those to you on the August 16th meeting. Um, we didn't want to, yeah, there's been a lot. Um, plus, we're still we're pacing it out. But those should be the last round of ordinances that we do. And that should find schedule, et cetera, et cetera. We really wanted to wait for the clerk to call on so we can have in, her input on that fine schedule. She's the one who's going to be managing it. Of course, it'll all be approved by council, but we do want her feedback on it. Uh, if I, I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but I can say hopefully by October 1, mid-October, we can have our first case. Thank you, sir. No problem. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Very, it's been a learning experience with the mayor's court. Yes. It's been a lot of work, but the end result is going to be awesome. Right. It is. Gained some new knowledge, right? I, I, we all have. So, uh, all right, thank you, sir. <coughs> and then dropping down to pending charter review commission members of work session. So this is, I guess, uh, we're just going to be kind of a formal talk tomorrow. So, um, Mr. Hall, Mr. Griffin, do you have anything you want to start off with? Uh, you know, we, we've well, I know. a little bit. Well, yeah, sir. Sir, uh, I, I know that there was uh, some discussion Council meeting um, about potential procedure issues or lack thereof of when we appointed us as as a committee, whether or not we were following in line with the charter. So I, I think collectively, knowing you know that this is a legal you know binding document, we would like to make sure that we're following the charter that you guys are charging us to review. So. Um, I realize we only have three members of our uh, original five applications that were initially approved. Uh, Ms. Pat Krabacher is currently out of the country serving on a mission trip. And um, I believe uh, Mr. Ian Meadows, uh, he seems somewhat undecided now whether or not he would like to press forward, but I would uh, leave that to him uh, as to whatever his current status is for the charter. Um, I understand that some other applications or an application potentially may have came in, so I don't know if we want to address that application, if you guys would like to interview us or ask us any questions. I know we kind of have some questions for you, uh, but if this is, I, I guess, the way I visualize this is an opportunity for us to kind of understand each other's intentions mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, whatever our goals are for this, and, uh, and I leave it to you. Miss Wright, I thought that's what I was you were back there. You were like right one, but then I just, <laughs> I knew you were back there. I like it that way. <laughs> <laughs> she did come first. What's that? I think she did come first. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did get the application. We've got it from uh, uh, Ms. Matlock, and um, that's awesome. That she, I, I think it was your post that she, I was tagged, and I was being interested in the, uh, in the uh, charter of these that day. She said she would not be able to make it tonight, though? I didn't. She said she, she was going to track. Okay. So, at the 7 o'clock. So. so, what we have before, not including you know, the technical three, because we don't know about Mr. Meadows and the ones out of the country. Um, when does she do that? She's due back late August. Late so August? I, I believe August. she'll be back in three and a half weeks. Okay. And then we could get the. Uh, but she's still in Right, right, right. She has not been interviewed. Yeah, she would suck the interview still. So she's not a member until she's interviewed on the point, so they still only have four. So I don't know if there's anything contingent upon exactly what the interviews entail. Um, I do know, I have been speaking with Ms. Krabacher since she has been in Africa, and she's been very receptive to email. So I don't know if there's a series of questions that if this could even possibly work. 
of, you know, if there was any questions that were asked to the body, you know, of the committee that, in all fairness, to give her an opportunity to, to answer those questions, if that would be possible, uh, to then maybe come on the next council meeting uh, in two weeks to then vote us in again officially, giving time for the other application to come in, and then I believe there is another individual who is also eager to apply. Uh, like, could we legally? I'm, I'm no attorney, but I mean, if you're going to be someone, they have to be physically present, right? I'd ask Jay, but I I would ask ask Jay, but ask him if it could be done by Zoom. You guys aren't allowed to do it. Well, I thought we just you have to meet in person, but I don't know if she can be in Zoom or not. But haven't we made some changes in things so that we can if? Next week we needed to meet and meet by Zoom. We could do it. The state of Ohio ended all their yeah. online meeting requirements effective July. 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 So every municipality had to go back to in person. Well, if we if we were maybe ask them if we're in person, if we're in here, if we set her up on a video screen somehow. If that would be. Really well. I mean, yeah, I can ask them, but I don't know if we have the quick enough. We can't do live meeting now. We could do it here. We could do it here. We have to go to the fire station. We don't have the internet. Oh, now we're going to be the university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would it be possible to? I know some of the things that, uh, some of the questions that we have for you guys is on the comprehensive plan for the city. Um, I do believe the ORC, and again, we probably need to talk with Jake. Is we could serve as just a special advisory council and not then be contingent upon the charter. Uh, there's. There's only a few a handful of committees that are even listed in the charter, but I believe you guys have the ability to, to determine people as like special advisors or you know subcommittees that are not mentioned in the charter. But would it? I would just say find the fifth person. Find the fifth, and that just, would be your quickest, okay. cleanest way to do sure. it. And what I suggest is when this is Matlock applied, we had a very quick subsequent application for the Park Red Bull, which was different. I didn't realize this until about 20 minutes from the We're from the same address. Yeah. But I think that they're clearly living together. If he's willing to go to the Charter Review Commission, opposed to the Department of Rec Board, that would give them their five to get started. Sure. Or go out and get another, another person. Because you can meet as a subcommittee. I don't know we have to take on that. Because I don't remember anything in our charter about the creation of subcommittees. Okay. It's just really extension of a council by a board. And you still have to go through some sort of vetting, even mm -hmm. if it's a subcommittee. Right. Um, but if there's nothing in our charter about subcommittees, I don't know how that really work out. Okay. I would just play the wall very, very, very correctly and, and just get that to the person as quickly as you can. What was the uh, other gentleman's name you mentioned? Uh, Jason McPeak. And he's interested in the. Yes. Charter too? Yes, he is. He's currently out of town on business. He'll be back on Wednesday, but he has the application. And I believe his intent is to submit that application. Okay. So, potentially six. More married. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and I, I, I solicited a few people over the weekend, the members of the community. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe there's a, a young Hispanic woman who just graduated from college who's also interested in potentially serving. Mm -hmm. So I put in an application her way as well. Awesome. That one about him. Him? Mm -hmm. And husband and wife participate in it? Yeah. Well, you all know I don't speak for my wife, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can ask her. <laughs> okay. All right, council, do you guys have any uh, feedback, comments, questions for these three on this topic? I mean, where do you guys, uh, any directions you want to see them look into or go? Or? Okay. Um, I know I, I, I talked to Donnie just a little bit casually, a couple, you know, a little bit. Um, the one biggest thing that I, you know, I, I would like to see change in the charter is our council members drop. You know, Clark County can run the entire county with three commissioners and township can run with three township trustees. I don't see why a city our size needs seven council members. And that's, you know, it's not anything political because um, it, it would take place after I was gone, I think. So, um, but, you know, it would, save, it would save a lot of time and a headache for the administration side, I think. Not necessarily a headache. We don't cause them headaches at all. Really. 
No, not at all. <laughs> Love every seven of you. <laughs> <laughs> but it would say I think it would just overall say it make it less complex of what it would need to, what it needs to be. Uh, you know, I think five is more than enough. I mean, you could probably even do it with three, but I think five would be the better number. Three, it could possibly cause problems. You know. Um, so I think that's you know one thing that I would like to see. It's tough, tough to get a form on three. With right. Somebody sick. Um, you know the, the 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 form of government we have, where it's a city manager, you know, strong. I'm, I don't think that has changed. I don't. You know, me personally, I don't think there's too many changes. In that's my big one. I think that would that would help the city dramatically is dropping the council members down to five versus seven. And I don't think we're big enough to have council members from specific precincts. Uh, so I still think we will be at large. Mm -hmm. I know that has been brought up before. Yeah. I, I disagree with him, but. With me or Dale? Dale. Oh, okay. I, I think there's something to be said that have somebody that, the com my big thing in town here is community, mm -hmm. and there is none. I disagree. Um, you, do you remember what it was like in the 60s? No, I wasn't alive yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen pictures, though. I, in cleaning up during this whole pandemic thing, I ran across a booklet that was the program booklet for the sesquicentennial. Yeah. You know how many people were on committees? Not the people who worked. Mm -hmm. 255. Yeah. Well, that was the thing back in the 60s. It wasn't no one It was a lot more free time. You know, most, most households had one person working. Uh, well, sure, I'm, I'm absolutely, the lifestyle has changed. As a parent of three, <coughs> it's hard for me just to cut out this time, uh, more or less, right. being on the uh, committee. I mean, it's come summertime and, and winter when I'm dealing with baseball and, and basketball, it's, you know, it's, it's tough. Uh, I don't think we've had, you know, and you didn't have as, I mean, you know, for, I mean, this is, for example, when I played baseball, we had a month before we started football. Uh, this year we had six days. Uh, there's just no time in between anymore. So I, I think that takes a lot of the parents. People who would be on committees, that takes a lot of the parents. A lot of the attention from otherwise serving. Uh, you know, I mean, we, we have serious communication problems in the city in terms of communicating with the citizens. I mean, we have no local newspaper anymore. We, I don't know anybody who gets the Springfield paper. Uh, no, no, that's, just, that's not going to make me cry. No, but... Communication nowadays is done via social media. Right there. And, and the text messages. Unfortunate. You don't have to do as much face-to-face -face communication as, as you have in the past, as you have unfortunate technology, which isn't always good. I would, well, right, and it yeah. pretty much excludes a large pop population. I wouldn't say excludes. Um, they choose to be excluded. You, know, you choose not to be able to text them. Uh, this is what I tell my mother all the time. She chooses not to text me. Uh, you know, uh, she knows how busy we are in texting but to find out what the city's doing well, I'm they, what, the what are the sources the last, of information facebook i've been into the city building the last couple of weeks there's plenty of information i've got you can grab you can see what's going on with the city you just got to make it's just not <laughs> you. you have to interact with the by both parties right uh, and unfortunately, uh, I think we, we've gotten to the point in society where people just want anything to do what they want. This is what you want. Here, you know, you know they, they don't want to put any effort into it. It's, it's a two-way street. Yeah. Um, I can only go so far before they have to come right. to me. Um, 
So if they if they knew one per particular person in the area that they lived in that they could go to, right now it's well, who do I go to? I don't know any of them. Well, I mean, no, no offense. I can get from one side of the city to the other in about seven minutes in a vehicle with that. I mean, it's not like we're Philadelphia or New York or. or, or I mean, it's. And we're here every every other Monday, and, and and Randy's in the city building every every day, and and Mike, if you can't find Mike, it's you know you're not looking hard enough. <laughs> I mean, he's either on Plumwood or on Lake, and and, um, and all of our phone numbers are on the website and the newsletter. Yeah, I mean, you, there's. I mean, I agree with you. Times have changed. There's the people that aren't real busy. Yeah, there, there's not that a drive to be involved in your community as much as there was. I agree back in. in those days, um, but at the same time, there's also the group of people um, that, you know, the information's there. It's our bill. I mean, we're here. You can't, like I said, you can't find any of us, then you're not putting the effort because we're out there. Everyone here is available. And we put the council meetings on YouTube. So, do people want to sit? Casey, how many people watch our council meetings on YouTube? I mean, I think once we get the internet um, fixed here and we can live stream, and hopefully we can accept uh, messages via via email during the meetings. Um, I think that'll that'll go a long way. Um, you know, people you know they don't want to get out of the comfort of their own home most of the time anyway. The creatures have it. Um, so, if it would be possible to interject, um, I, I know we're not an established body yet, but this has been a lot of our discussions as well. Um, Mrs. Wright, I don't want to steal her thunder, uh, but I sent out an individual email to uh, a few of the committee members over the weekend, and she had a fantastic idea of what I thought was fantastic, of possibly mailing out a survey to the community, uh, specifically regarding the charter, uh, but essentially soliciting feedback. So whether this would be done via mail, um, I also think it would be uh, an opportunity at farmers markets to set up a table. Um, this can be accomplished through council or by an established committee. Um, and also the Heritage Festival. Uh, when I spoke with Mr. Uh, Mayor Lowry, um, that is that is a that is a time at least for me and my family of great pride in the city. Um, and I, I don't I, I represent a certain demographic of, of the dual income families raising four kids right now who are just literally trying to survive every single day. And I know people have it much harder than I do. And I, I do think there's pride out there. I do think people care. Mm -hmm. But the demographics have changed dra drastically in just one generation. Mm -hmm. And now we're trying to recover. And now we're worried about what it's going to look like for our kids. Because if this is what community involvement looks like for, for my generation, then what's it going to look like for my kids? So I think in the exploration phase, I do think the charter is, 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 is a, it's the spine of the city. It's the soul of the city. It's our identity. It's our constitution. It's a very important document. And, I, and it has to go on a ballot where people vote for it. And if, if they're not involved in this process, if they're unaware, then I, I think it, it, it could be a lot of work that we put in for no reason, unless we have that community involvement. I like the ideas of the uh, retreat, um, in town halls, any sort of group discussions we can possibly have. But I'm very interested, if selected for this committee, to speak to many different people who represent this community and serve in this community because I believe the charter impacts a lot of different people's lives. So, um, you know, understanding our form of government, uh, you know, is, is a major part of it. Uh, I've talked with, with a few of you about my position on it, uh, but I think also enforcement is going to be a major, major part of this review, and we're really going to have to kind of come to terms. But I, I think enforcement could be a potentially a, a large area of discussion uh, where we would be soliciting feedback, uh, you know, for as many people that we can because we realize we have a lot of, of ordinances that we're not responsible for reviewing. However, enforcement section of the charter is going to directly impact the laws that you guys have already approved. Mm -hmm. So if we're not going to enforce those laws, then maybe we should reevaluate what enforcement looks like in New Carlisle. We don't have to be like everybody else. Um, it, there's there's some other ways and maybe we can solicit. I know uh, Mr. Griffith has talked about possibly having guest speakers come in who have 
redeveloped cities similar to ours, and uh, you know what they did when they when they were in our stage right now. But, but that, that's that's the, the big thing collectively, and I don't want to speak for the group, but uh, you know we're very curious of what other people. We realize this is very important to be even considered to be selected for something like this, but we just want to make sure that we're representing everyone's best interests. Well, I like that idea. Is, um, with, with our um, our uh, water bills, the way they go out, are we able to, if they were to come up with, say, a list of questions or, or you know, whatever, some sort of questionnaire, whatever whatever it may be that was to come up, can we put that in our water bills? In the water bill? Not in the water bill, but because it, since it's in an envelope now, we can put an extra sheet. Oh, we can do like a, a supplemental, but that's not how you want to do something like that. You want to do something, I mean, you got to think, if you mail out paper stuff, surveys, one, your results, your response results are going to go to the down because now someone has to write it on a piece of paper and mail it back. So the best bet is to do an electronic survey. The survey monkey, you know, people can even just access on websites or, you know. And, uh, well, we could announce it, in the, it, announce it in the water bill so that they know where to go. Just a yeah, thing that. I, mean, I, I really like the idea. I'm being very, very honest. No one reads that stuff. They, they get so used to seeing, they look at their bill, how much it is, and move it on. We can put maybe one million dollars, everyone can I think four people will come to me. I'm not trying to be negative, just we work with this all the time. Your best bet to get to most people is a social media blast, Facebook, all kinds of stuff, you might page, all our individual pages. Here is the link to it, do it, they do it. When we did all, I mean, when the, you know this when you started, I mean, your results don't matter, especially in paper. Your, your so is this a, something that would be separate than through our website? It would be like a, a company that would put together. No, you can have the survey monkey is just a third party administrator. They will, they will house your survey. They will keep your data. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to put the link however you want. So we can have a link on the website. So it's a charter review survey like this. It can be on a Facebook page like that. It can be on your Facebook page. Takes it to the survey okay. monkey site where they where they do one. What kind of cost is it? Yeah, I was going to say we just did one for X the X Facebook. And, up to X amount of questions. Yeah, right, right, right. yeah. But you don't want it to be no more than five or six. I, gonna, I think it's six because we just did one for the baseball association. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of serious questions to these surveys, but you know now about how long you keep someone to six expand. When I start out surveys and how to do my thesis and stuff, no more than maybe seven questions. Okay. I've never heard of that. Survey monkey? Oh, yeah, that's great. We are our <laughs> mandatory online, and we use survey monkey for guys who do quizzes every month. And that's not to say you can't do a small blast, and if you guys really want to hit it on, you can look at the demo graphs, and you can say anyone from the age 45 up, we're going to mail them something. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, the older you are, the less likely you can take it. Right. Now, your young population will be all on the way to be But okay. if you want to really get everything, you could target mail some surveys directly to their house. I think that's your point is use all the channels of communication that you have. Yeah. You have mail covered with water bill. So everyone that doesn't do you know, um, social media, at least they've got, got it mail. If, if you guys mention it on the, in your YouTube videos and your Facebook posts, but there are other places that, that we can do this. It's just all channels of communication, but all that feedback goes into the one document serving which is free. And then you guys could approve the, uh, the questions, you know, uh, and then we can see the results together. Right. I mean, for, for me, it's the, the scope of work for this uh, charter review committee. I just, I just want to know what I volunteered for. You know? <laughs> and, uh, so um, that and um, I, I would want to have citizen input on this. I think that's important. So uh, as well as all the more input. What, is there a reason that the charter was set up to be reviewed every so often? Yeah, because things change. Mm -hmm. Times so change. <laughs> what things does council want to see change? What do your administrators want to see change? What does might the public want to see change? I think that's what our charge is. Yeah. 
And that was a great point with the, the demographic point, too. I, I would like that incorporated into the study, too, identifying the type of household that's filling out the survey. And I think that's a collective intelligence that will help you in other areas that you guys are trying to work, like your, your comp plan and things like that, and understanding our demographics. And as I would recommend making it as specific as people feel comfortable with. They don't have to answer all the demographic questions, but um, you know, I'd be generally curious. You know, oh, yeah. how many dual-income families do we have in this town? You know, how many single parents do we have out there? How many? You know, what's our you know age demographic and things like that? Because when when deciding you know changes on the charter and the people and the collateral consequences of those changes, we understand our body of people a little bit better. Uh, and then I, again, I think you know I, I want to be proud of this when we're done. I, I really want all of us to, to say we gave it our best shot. Uh, it's, it, it may sound a little hokey, but I said it to these guys that you know the word sanctuary is kind of a buzzword. But to be honest with you, everybody deserves to have a sanctuary city for their for themselves and their families. Yeah. And I believe this charter has a lot to do with you know how we posture that that city. So, so we can market ourselves and say, this is our identity, this is who we are, come grow with us, come live with us, your neighbors help with neighbors. You know, let's, let's make the charter reflect our values. Yeah. I basically concur with the word of all in regard to our situation as far as the council coming forward. Also, I think that if we desire to go into a, I guess the word is a five-member council, we are going to have to be awfully careful on how that is done. Because if you drop one member at each election off, we're going to have a two-year period that we're going to end up with six people, which if we are to end up in a tie, will cause several problems. I don't know what the idea of, I can understand the economics of going to five. I have no problem with that. I just think that what we do needs to be thoroughly thought out in a very concise plan. But. Within doing that, it's going to have to be good. Anything else, sir? No. Mr. Cobb, you got anything you want to add or question, sir? It doesn't matter. It's still going to come back to the law director, city manager, council. Then it's going to go before the citizens decide. Well, I think that's one of the big things I mentioned to you is, is you touched on it just a little bit, is making sure that once this is done, once it's decided or what you present to us and we look it over and it goes forward, that the, the educating, the, educating the, the citizens when it comes time to vote, what they're actually looking at. Because I think, you know, I told it to you, it, I think it, it failed the last time just because I think people see it, charter, you know, the charter, and they get scared. I don't know what this is. I'm either not voting for it at all, or they just vote no because they fear maybe some sort of taxes in there or, or a new laws that's going to impact their way of living in New Carolina. So you know that that'll be a key key thing as well. It's just you know, and like you said, whether it's uh, the uh, getting things mailed out or, or just some in-person things at festivals or farmers market, I think could definitely help with that. So, let's see. Um, if I could address Mr. Cook's concern about dropping to five. On one cycle, we have three council members. On another, we have four. We cut that back to two. Then right away, we would have five. You're speaking of the election that would take place two years from now. Right. And that, that is the thought. Um, I just want to be sure that when we do this, it is thoroughly thought out so that we don't open up another can of worms and get ourselves in a problem. We could also just research some other cities and see what, you know, cities that have done some of the things. There's got to be articles out there on it. I'm sure. So. Anything else, Mr. Grimm? No. The state is There's no accounts. No, sir. Sir. 
I don't know, that, and that's what I was thinking. I don't know if there is. I'm not I'm saying. It could, yeah, and it could be. Yeah. And I'll be back to that. has seven. Do they really? They're not a, yeah. they're not a city, but they're, 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 they're a village. 200 so, people. Yeah. <laughs> they usually have to that's appoint. a huge <laughs> percentage of that population. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that would be dictated in the city. Right? But we'll look. Um, take five minutes, that out. Are we doing, you know, looking at the, and after talking at our last meeting and then looking at the agenda, I know it says under the regular council meeting um, interview slash appointments. I mean, is this, can, I mean, this is, are we doing? I thought we had appointed them. Well, we accepted it, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we did not interview them. No, we, we didn't, no, I know we didn't interview them. That, yeah. That's part of the charter. Right. <laughs> But I'm saying, as far as an actual interview, it's, it's, it says interview under town I mean, we can do that in here since we have a. Well, we, that's why I called you, Mr. Cook, over the weekend because you could technically, but you're going to be visiting again in the regular session. Okay. So that's why I put it under regular sessions. You guys can interview them, and right after that, go ahead and make the motion to approve. Okay. But not you can interview. You can talk about whatever you want now. Interview any official action has to be done in the regular. Right. That's why. I'm there. Well, that's all I was going to say was, is I know the three of you fairly well. So, I mean, I mean, just from dealing with the three of you, I don't have a whole lot of questions for you because, I mean, I know you all three are, you know, good citizens, a long time, you know, been involved with the city. So, I mean, I don't have anything to ask you guys. I mean, I, I trust your guys' uh, work ethics and judgments and all the above. So. Can I ask them a few questions? You can ask me anything you want. Awesome. I have noted here, you know, you guys current mm -hmm. comp plan. Seven. I was talking to Mr. Hall on the phone today. Our planning board is, is looking at that already. Mm -hmm. It is uh, since 2012, the last time I looked at it. And I'm going to email it to you. I wanted to do it before I got here today, but okay. it got, the time got away. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to email you, Excuse Mr. Hall, and talk about the legal opinion. Yes, is there any other documents that you guys are going to need you can pick off the top of your head that I can get to you? The only thing, I, I sent you that one legal opinion from UC Berkeley. Uh, it's for California doing you know, municipal charter reviews. Mm -hmm. and it's a five-page document that it is essentially just kind of a, like a source document. gives just kind of general mm -hmm. consensus of, of what the charter is, what it encompasses, you know, some, mm -hmm. yeah. For, and there's a case law, but it's applicable to California. But I didn't know. Only thing I could find online from the state of Ohio was like 63 pages. So it was, it was a monster source book mm -hmm. for charter review. <laughs> I just didn't know if Jake may have access to something that, you know, I don't like know. a cheat sheet almost? I mean, what, what exactly is it? Yeah, it just basically, it gives you just kind of, these are the ORC articles applicable to municipal charter reviews. Um, it kind of outlines some different sources, applies some case law. Uh, just, just again, some extra resources for us to, you know, check and verify, you know, with the code, you know, with with anything that we're doing, you know, just like you're talking about the seven members. Well, that's that'd be, a, you know, a, something that we would, you know, like to do our own due diligence. I know we trust our law director, but uh, just something that has easy access to, to just, you know, the code, I guess. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to word that. Thing. Do you have any source documents for municipal charter reviews? Does it, has the state of Ohio or the Bar Association put out any source documents for charter reviews? Normally it's some law students, project, law review. Access to all that, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So our next, I mean, obviously in the regular meeting, We'll do the official interview, I guess, if you will, and the appointments if council so chooses to do so, which I don't see why it would be a problem. And then we need to get those other two to three extra members rolling as soon as possible, hopefully at the next meeting, to get things officially moving. And oh, also, Jake, about, oh. Go ahead. I'm just thinking out loud. That's right. Mr. Craybacher interview at the moment. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we can, we can meet in person, but if we're allowed to have her on a, screen somewhere to do her interview. Mm -hmm. Seven. 
You know, the more I think about that, as long as you guys are in person and she's on that screen, that'd be no different than us talking to a, like a vendor or a contractor. Right. But it may be different too because it is a board that's going to be working for the city. So we'll just make sure we do it correctly and get Jake's opinion on it. Roger that. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tyler revised code chapter 731 stipulates the city is must invest their legislative power in a legislative authority. The authority must be composed of at least seven members. There it is. Really? There it is. So there's your seven. Maybe you should be our city attorney. Four of whom. That. <laughs> Look at that. How oh, quick that Google. was. With Google, you can get lots of stuff fast. Everybody's a doctor, attorney, or the <laughs> best person in the world because of Google. It also says four of whom are elected from wards and three of whom are elected by citywide vote. Well, that's, I mean, it, but if you read into it, it's, the wards are established by the charter. They don't, uh, okay. they don't have yeah, to be. I was going to say, probably have to they be don't, split you know, there for charters. Yeah. 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 Charter is the same. Charter is for, for seven. But. And then, like, Sydney just went to wards based off of their square mileage. Okay. They have four, four, four wards and three at large. Then what you read? Mm -hmm. And would our home rule authority what? supersede that? Um, not to butt in, <laughs> but I just sent this to the ring. Um, a lot of right to revise code section 705.72 council members, number of members in the term, um, says in short, I'm going to summarize because it's long, um, not less than five or more than 15, uh, but then it goes on to say, um, When a council is elected at large, the number of councilmen shall be in proportion to the population of a municipal corporation as determined by the last proceeding in the federal census. A municipal corporation having not more than 10,000 inhabitants, three councilmen, not more than 10,000, and not more, more than 10,000 and not more than 25,000 should have five, and more than 25,000. So technically, we could go to three based off our. our <laughs> well, if they're elected, but it's a little bit different. It looks like if it's elected by the wards, um, if they're elected by the wards, no more than 10,000 inhabitants would be five. So. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's food for thought down the road when we get the official committee put together. Mr. Bridge, do you have anything else for these three? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay. Council? I'm by this clause we found, so. <laughs> anything else, Council? Anything else, Don? That's yes, right. Just uh, the other thing in the charter, uh, it addressed the form of government as Council and City Manager, and I just wondered, is that a topic of discussion here? I think not, not that I'm as far as <clears throat> me, as far as does anybody want to see it changed? Yeah, the mechanism for changing that would be within the charter, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so, I'm fine with the city manager, you know, strong form of government. I mean, me personally, I just I mean, it, it seems like it works. If anyone wants me to leave the room while you have this discussion, <laughs> we will. <laughs> you ain't getting a raise. <laughs> May not have to worry about it because we're just so. <laughs> so you're not worried about the city. That. <laughs> no. Well, the, the advantage of a city, a strong city manager, is you have someone who uh, preferably has a degree, right. uh, someone who has studied municipal management. If you just have a strong mayor, who knows what you'll get? Yeah. We might get Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's 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 been that way. Was it ever? Was it ever mayor? Mm -hmm. It was a mayor back prior to uh, becoming. Well, we I would think that was a village. Then we were the mayor, and I agree with Dale and you in regard to the standpoint, the professionalism the amount of money that we're spending, the amount of people. Um, I, I don't think we want to go back to a strong mayor form of government. 
there may be a certain person out there that would fit that capability, but to get that same person in year after year, election after election, I don't think that would be a very valuable situation. Okay. And then also you hear that, that topic comes up with the city manager. Why don't we have a city manager that's from New Carolina? You know, I mean, we, we really, and not that there's someone in New Carolina that couldn't do the job, but you really narrow yourself down to um, you know, less options if something was to be a problem with, you know, one or two that you had hired. You know, as far as council being from the city, which is the most definite, you need to. We're the ones that live here. We, we talk to you guys. You guys talk to us. But, you know, the day-to-day -day operations for the city manager, I don't think it should be locked down to just someone who lives in the city of New Palau. I think that really would narrow down, um, you know, the possibilities of who we could have. So. Um, so. Happen to agree with you. Yeah. Uh, and even with Randy sitting here, I think we have a good guy in the, in the seat. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like this whole government. But, you know, when Randy was to maybe, you know, get hired for the city of Chicago or something, you're oh. maybe interested, <laughs> Scott? <laughs> but I do think with that, though, because uh, I, I, I definitely agree a strong city manager form of government is us for New Carlisle. Um, but I think when we do get in that chapter and we start talking about his administration or her administration, um, that, that may be something that, that you guys want to discuss a little bit about how your departments work. When we get a comp plan, how does the administration complement the comp plan? Mm -hmm. um, do we need to add to, subtract from? You know, that's where I think some discourse and discussion could, could come in, into play. Not necessarily the form of government, just but maybe the size of the government or the complexity of the government. Mm -hmm. And off of that, you know, <clears throat> we talked about Mr. Cook and, and well, I think in the Sagos and we've been pushing for let's get a, a, uh, a retreat together to, to get a goal for, you know, five years hour or seven or whatever ends up being decided on. And then we talked, I don't know if you were at that meeting or not, but we discussed that maybe we should hold off on that because if you guys are putting a charter together that may have new aspects to it, well, that may change some of the angles or considerations that we want to do. So it's, you know, what, you know, like we discussed, what needs to come first? Does the charter need to come first or does our plan need to come first? And Chicken or the egg? The plan, do you think the plan needs to come before they make their decision? I thought we had cut off the, 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 uh, we, we the have. tree due we to have. Uh, up in the election. Possibility of yeah, we did, we did. But I think it was just casual discussion. Do we, I don't, and at this late in the year with a budget coming up and, and CIPs and, and things like that, you, you really couldn't even, I don't know if you could get one together that quick, to be honest. But um, An idea I had potentially is could we do them in tandem? I do believe that they, they intersect one another. And I think for us as a committee, uh, it would help us kind of posture where we're going and what mm -hmm. we're doing. If we uh, you know, had an idea of kind of the five year, 10 year plan, and I believe some of the people that we want to talk to and you know interview or just hear their thoughts on and things like that i think you could you need that intelligence for your comp plan yeah so you know we're kind of just sharing information whether it's a separate committee that's taking care of that um or, or whoever i would like to share some of the you know it's raw intelligence that we've got from the community that i think may help with your retreat or if it's possible that we could do it in tandem if the actual no kidding let's shut things down and retreat. Right. It doesn't happen until after the new year. I don't think, you know, we can't collect information leading up to that. So when you get to that final, like, okay, let's sit down and really hash this out. Now you've got a ton of resource, a ton of feedback that you guys can really digest as a, as a you know, as a council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. No, I agree. Anything else? Anything else here? Mr. Bridge, anything? Well, I got like one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> just bullet points of, I just want to say it out loud so I think the council can hear it and then the Charter Review Commission can hear it about things that we see, and this is just the tip of iceberg, that I think would have immediate impacts on the council's overall operations. Um, one, resolutions, they have a 15-day waiting period. Those should be effective immediately after they're passed. 
your ordinances are the ones that you should have that waiting period because when you kind of maybe have to order things with certain contracts. And the, and the charter already specifically spells out pretty clear what has to be done by ordinance and what doesn't. Your resolutions are, uh, let's change the bank signatory. Well, once that gets approved- Let's change, what would you say? Like change the bank signatory would be something that a resolution would do. Okay. Let's say we have a new finance director and I have to change, get a resolution there to go be, have permission to change out a new signature chart so they can make changes to the account. I have to wait 14 days for that resolution to become an impact. Right. So it really puts a hinder on city city or uh, city business. Most cities, their resolutions do not have a waiting period. It's your ordinances that do. So that is something that would be awesome if we can get changed. Okay. Codification update. Um, the last time the charter was approved, it was uh, kind of a while ago. Now today, everything is online. Mm -hmm. We are only supposed to do our code like once every four to 10 years. That needs to be changed every six months to every year or immediately after we pass the law. Because right now, I can technically wait after five years, well, since most people use our codes online, we'll say council doesn't, we do an amendment to the code that changes something. Technically, I don't have to send it anywhere until that period ends and then the online code doesn't get updated. So anything that, anytime we pass legislation that gets codified, I think that should be in the charter for that to be done nearly immediate after, within X amount of weeks or days from when it's passed. City manager, it says two years experience as a city manager. That's, that needs to be at least five. We are a small city with big city problems. Water, wastewater. I mean, we, we got a lot of, a lot of big things going on. And it took me around two or three years to really get in to fully understand my job, understand the roles, and to that. Given New Carlisle, let's say if I go, you guys have to look at someone else. You're going to get someone with very little to know Someone with five, six years experience aren't, isn't going to come here and take the day that you guys can offer. So maybe look at that just to boot for thought about, it doesn't have to be five, maybe three years experience opposed to that too. Um, residency requirements, I know that came up, but you guys might want to look into that because the state of Ohio has now made that illegal to require your city manager to live in your residence unless you do specific things. Uh, but right now, the charter just says it's up to you guys, so you might want to look at the legality of the current language versus current state law. You can classify this as a safety service position and actually require your manager to live in your residency, but it has to be based on current state law. Right now, how it works is it, not, not lined up. Another thing, too, with the city manager is right now your charter calls for, let's say I put my resignation in, it calls for a 30-day notice. When you're in this position, you have this much stuff under your belt, most cities require 60 days. That's something that I was working on a contract for my employment with you guys. I was graciously putting that 60 day in there going above and beyond of what your charter does. You guys have to look out for yourself at the end of that day. And 30 days is not enough time for someone to clean up what they're doing, get someone else in, and then make that transition easy. Again, a lot of cities have that 60 day requirement of most of 30. Uh, and the last one is the Hi, for us on the administration thing is the how we have to do our CIP. We have to do that three months before we submit the budget. Mm -hmm. We don't carry over millions of dollars in a lot of our programs. So we're essentially doing our CIP multiple times a day. We'll do it first to meet the charter requirement, put our operational budget in there, realize we didn't have enough funds in there to do a capital, so now we have to amend it again to make the line item match the in, in balance. So it presents a lot of challenges with how we do that. Again, if we were in Springfield or in Dayton or in Beaver Creek where these fund balances have millions of dollars left over, that's very easy. We're not in the same boat. Right. So we literally have to slash our CIP multiple, multiple times. And that was just a quick one. That's all. Thank you, sir. Those are some good ones. Yes. CIP state is a capital, capital improvement plan. Capital improvement plan. That's, uh, we have to do it every year, and it's for five years. And maybe we look at that and so five years here, you maybe some three years. Mm -hmm. you know. right. Any other? That's right, do you have anything else? All right. Well, if that's the case. Oh. I would like to thank all of you because I've spent lots of time in that document and uh, you're great. <laughs> uh, 
All right, well, we are down to um, executive session. There's nothing left, so. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Grimm. Councilman No Kowski? Councilman uh, Cook? No, Cobb. Cobb, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yeah, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. And Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. 7 0, we are adjourned.